Now, question two, a physicist measures the electric field strength at different distances away from a point charge. The data is plotted in the graph below. So let's have a look at our graph, see what information we have. On our y-axis, we have the electric field strength. And on our x-axis, we have the 1 over r squared. So 1 over the distance squared away from the magnetic field. Now, this can be, I guess, quite an intimidating or weird way to interpret this data. So I want you to think about is if you are really, really close to the electric field, or sorry, in this state, we have an electric field strength at a different distance. If you're really close to the source of the electric field, you may be, say, an R equal to 1. And when we plot this on our x-axis, it would be 1 divided by 1 squared, and that would equal 1. But as you get further away, so a further distance away would be, say, an r value equal to 5 meters away. And that would get you an x value of 1 over 5 squared, which is equal to 1 over 25. And what you notice is 1 over 25 is a smaller value for when it's closer. So we're looking at a relationship along our x and y axis is this is really close to our magnetic, sorry, to our electric field. And we know it has a really strong electric field strength there. But the further you get away, you get a smaller x value due to this one over r squared relationship. So that's one way to start thinking about this graph here. Now let's continue on and have a look at what the question's specifically asking us. So identify the mathematical relationship between E and one over R squared. So I'm going to write my answer up on this portion. You all should be continuing it in the appropriate area for the exam, but it just makes it a little bit easier for us to keep the graph in front of us. So I'll clear out this. So with a question that is asking us for a mathematical relationship, we need to put down a formula. It's not saying what we just said as the distance away from the electric field increases, the electric field strength decreases. That's stating the relationship of what happens between the two. We want a mathematical expression. So what I want to write down straight off the bat is what our y is. y is equal to E, our electric field strength. x, on the other hand, is equal to our 1 over r squared. And looking at this graph, we have a very straightforward, which is y equals mx plus c. So a very straightforward linear equation. Now, we can solve for the gradient or we can solve for c first. I'm going to solve for C first by just saying C is equal to zero. So down at this point, the relationship we already noted was the further and further and further away you get away, get from the source. So one over say 100 squared. That value on our X axis is actually going to get really, 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 really close to zero. And also at that point, that electric field strength is going to get really, 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 really close to zero. So I'm going to make an assumption that C is equal to zero in this instance. Now, M on the other hand is our gradient. So for our gradient, we are just going to do the standard change in Y over the change in X. And let's just pick simple values. So M is going to be, let's have a look at our change in Y. This point up here does line up. On our graph so we would be looking at a y of 2000 so 2000 minus our zero here because we're saying the line continues through of that y point at that y point of 2000 it is a x value of going down 0 0.0258 so 0 0.0 sorry not 258 
two, eight, minus zero again, and we end up getting our gradient equal to 72,000. So now we can put all this information in together. So our X is gonna go there, our Y is gonna go here, and our gradient is gonna go here, and we'd get a function of E is equal to 72,000 multiplied by one on R squared. So that would be our solution for A. So again, I'll write that here. E is equal to 72,000 multiplied by our one on R squared. And that's putting it in the terms that we've been specified or asked to do, which is the E and the one over R squared. Now, part B, use the mathematical relationship identified in 2A to deduce the magnetic, the, sorry, the magnitude of the charge created, creating the electric field. So now we've got to think about the charge that creates this magnetic field. Now, the charge is going to be constant in this magnetic field because we can see it isn't changing at all. It is a linear line. So... What I would start off with is let's copy down the relationship we established beforehand. Now let's also write down what our formula is for the electric field strength in terms of the variables we've got listed here. So electric field strength is what we're trying to determine. Radius is what we have as another variable. And the other one is we're trying to determine the charge that creates this electric field. So we've got three. What I recommend is pulling out your formula book, see if you can find a formula. Now think this is part of our electromagnetic unit. See if you can find a formula that's under that topic that matches those three, var those three variables. So the formula you should have got is E is equal to one on four pi, then multiplied by Q, which is our charge, over R squared. Now, the reason I put the multiply here and the multiply is also in your formula book, it is to show you that this here is a constant. So this is Coulomb's constant. And what I would do for this is let one over four pi naught equal k e for Coulomb's constant. So I would rewrite the formula here as e is equal to k e multiplied by q r squared. So we've got quite now a similar formula between the two. I'm just going to rearrange it one more step so we can see that a little bit better. So we have E is equal to Coulomb's constant. I'm going to bring the Q down multiplied by 1 on R squared. So if you have a look at this, we have our 1 on R squared here and here. We also have our E and our E on the left hand side. So what we can think of now is we are essentially mapping off that 72,000 with our K Coulomb's constant and Q. So we could make a statement saying, therefore, 72,000 is equal to K E Q. Now we can rearrange that. I'm just going to go up a line and it's going to be, 72,000 divided by our K E is equal to our charge. And so the next step is you can substitute in your value for the K E. And what you should get is now, and again, your K E value will be in your formula book, 72,000 divided by, put in brackets here, nine times 10 to the power of 9 is going to be equal to our Q. We end up getting a Q equal to 0 
How many zeros do I have here? Five, eight. And so the charge says in coulombs to one decimal place should be equal to 8.0 times 10 to the negative 6. So we're putting it into scientific notation. Now, this is probably something we didn't look at through this question, but it's important to flag for the rest of your questions going forward, is just making sure all your units in the information given to you in the question is appropriate for those formulas. So we went off straight off the bat for our electric field strength. It's measured in Newton per coulomb, and our distance away is measured in meters here. So making sure if we had something different, when we use a constant, say like Coulomb's constant or Planck's constant for some of our quantum, if you don't have the correct units, you won't end up getting the correct solution. So always keep an eye out for what units you've been given. Is it in meters? Is it in centimeters? And make sure you convert them to the appropriate units for the formula you're using because your constants always require you to have the appropriate units.